The F-Bomb on Freak. FRQ.FM, this is the F-Bomb on Freak. And this week, for our first Freak Speak, I'm joined on the line by Paul Gill. Paul, you're a hypnotherapist. Do you believe there are certain issues and problems that people have that hypnosis can help with? There's a lot of uh, issues and problems now that hypnosis can help with. Uh, hypnosis is highly effective at resolving many psychological issues uh, because it goes quite deeply. It works with the subconscious mind rather than the conscious awareness. Can you convince a sceptic like me that it does work? Or does the very fact that I'm sceptical about hypnosis mean that it would actually never work on me? No, it's good that you're sceptic. I encourage people to be sceptic because I encourage people to question everything. We hold many beliefs, especially about hypnosis because we've seen stage hypnosis, perhaps Darren Brown or Keith Barry do extraordinary things with hypnosis and you kind of wonder is that real or is that set up well extraordinary things can be done with with hypnosis but hypnosis is is a state of mind that everybody goes into hypnosis in and out of it several times a day Uh, a classic example is if you're driving along in your car and you come into town and you kind of go god I I don't remember the journey at all I don't remember did I pass through such and such (laughs) a place happens to me all the time (laughs) yeah or even listening to music where you kind of zone out you become unaware of your surroundings especially with smokers smokers will find themselves outside of a door of a pub just focus intent on that need to have that cigarette at the exclusion of the elements, the weather and everything else to be in a hypnotic trance, if you like. But it's, it's quite normal for people to go in and out of hypnosis several times a day. Well, wow. I'm starting to get a bit more convinced, actually. But you mentioned music, actually. I read a thing recently where they said that listening to music is one of those times where you actually use the vast majority of your brain. So most of our listeners tuned in to Freak who are listening to brand new music are very well tuned in mentally, I suppose, right now. In fact, music can be very good if played in the background when people are studying. That might sound counterintuitive, but certain minds, the way minds are set up, is to have stuff going on in the background. It can soothe the mind uh, and uh, get the mind into uh, a creative experience. Well, you have worked as a talk presenter for Young People's Radio before, where you were offering advice on various topics week after week. Today's Freak Speak topic for our first F-bomb on Freak. We're keeping it simple social media. Now obviously we on Freak use social media all the time. You can tweet us at FRQFM. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash FRQFM and we give the odd tour of the studio on Periscope but we don't put up personal photos on Facebook. We're not sharing personal information about our presenters. Here was an interesting one Paul. A recent survey says 79% of parents consider Facebook to be dangerous. Do you think they're right? Yes and no. If you look back at the origins of social media, I suppose even the origins of the internet, going right back to the 1980s I think it was uh, there was something like only six email addresses in the world back then uh, and the reason those six email addresses were uh, from of certain universities around the globe and they had a connection with each other to share ideas and thoughts with like-minded people and individuals the internet then and, and, and social media evolved for the same reason so that people could connect but then also um, so that people could, could share their lives like the family friends, keep in contact with people. And I compare um, social media to like nuclear energy. Nuclear energy is neither good nor bad, it's just what you do with it. Well, one of the big worries, though, that people have, uh, parents have, is that the kind of people that their kids are connecting with are like adults, say, who are pretending to be children on Facebook, for example. Yeah, I don't believe that children should have social media pages. I'm not quite sure what the age... Um, but their li- lower age limit is 13. Facebook say they don't want anyone younger than that signing up. They remove accounts that are found to be- belong to children. But surely there's, there's not a lot they can do if kids are going to lie about their age. They're going to lie yeah, about their age. I don't, I, certainly, I don't remember being asked for any ID when I was setting up my Facebook account. So there can be kids there of any age. Yes, and it's true. You do not know who it is that you're talking to online. And parents have a right to be a little bit cautious about this. Personally, if it was up to me, I would say you know, the age should be 16, maybe even 17 or 18. Because if you, if you look at it this way, like you do not know the identity of anybody else. There's some several um, instances where people have met up in reality with people that they've been introduced to online. You know, suddenly they're, they're not who it is that they thought they were. I mean, there was actually a case in Dublin there last year, I, I saw this on Facebook, funnily enough, uh, where there was a guy, he was um, trying to meet people online and pass himself off as a teenager. Wow, and that only happened recently in Dublin. Well, to change tack, you have, in your professional work, dealt with addiction. Yes. Have you any experience of people actually being addicted to social media? Because apparently yeah. it's affecting yeah. more one, and more one people. One of the problems with being addicted to social media is recognising that it's a problem in the first place. Many people would say, no, I, 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 it's not a problem. Like, I routinely ask people when, when I interview them the first time like about their habits and, and about maybe their hobbies or their interests. And sometimes teenagers will say, my phone. And I go, yeah, what about your phone? That's my hobby. That's my interest. Yeah. yeah. 
and and it didn't seem to like do everything on on the phone. And I'm, I'm kind of looking for maybe physical hobbies, activities where you're out and about. But people have virtual lives online, and sometimes it's, it's an excuse not to have a good quality life in reality. I think if your virtual <laughs> life is getting more interesting than your real life, there's there's a problem there, isn't there? There is a problem, but people don't realise maybe sometimes the monster that social media can be. I mean, if anybody is going for a job. Their bosses, and, and I've been on panels interviewing people for jobs in another thing that I'm involved in, and we would go over social media and kind of go, well, what, what kind of person is that? Well, let's have a look at their Facebook profile. Let's look at stuff that maybe they tweeted. It's and all so out would, there, isn't it? I mean, like if you take, there's a fact that the average Facebook user has 135 friends. Women and girls apparently have more friends than guys, but the average is about 135. Each of those 135 friends that you have has an average of 135. Each of theirs has an average of 130. And it goes on and on. like... Anything you put up there can get a pretty big audience fairly quickly, can't it? It can, it can. I mean, remember, everybody can see that stuff. And, and I would say never post anything on Facebook that you're not comfortable with people seeing or any information that you wouldn't ordinarily like people to know about you. I suppose if you uh, wouldn't put it on a massive poster outside your house, don't put it up on the internet. Yeah, don't put, and, and certainly don't post on, online when you're drunk. There's nothing private on social media. And I, I would say there's nothing private on the internet. Even if you delete something on Facebook, if you, if you delete a Facebook fo- photo, it's gone from your profile, but Facebook keep, keep a copy of it. Not many people know that. It's actually in your user agreement. But there again, who reads the user agreement? It's like the iTunes user agreement. You go, oh, God, yeah. just give me my music. It's more relevant, I suppose, with Snapchat, where photographs just last for a couple of seconds and then disappear. Well, they don't ever disappear completely. Well, people don't seem to realise, like you said, it was in the user agreement, but it's Facebook's mission to get you to share as much information information as they can because they can share it with advertisers it's, it's their business model so it really is up to you to check your privacy settings isn't it and share what only what you want to share is, no, but remember like like when, when messenger was introduced there was a yeah. big hoo-ha about messenger it has access to your phone contacts your messages and all all the rest and messenger it was believed then that messenger could send out messages on your behalf there's nothing private about social media no. at all it also makes it nice and easy as, as kind of a, an ecosystem for bullies to live in as well, isn't it? A much easier place for bullies to target and attack victims. It's changed the whole di- dimension um, of, of bullying. Bullying used to happen to kids like when they were in school or maybe on the way home from school or up playing in the, in the playground or whatever. Now bullying follows you home, right into your home, into your bedroom. It's, it's there with you. It's on, the, it's, it's on your phone. It's on your, your computer. It, it, there's no respite from it. And many people have taken their lives. There was a case there just the week before last of a young chap taking his life because of stuff that he material he posted on social media that he was then being blackmailed. Um, that these pictures or, or whatever the material was that were going to be circulated all over the internet, and the pressure became so great for him that he took his own life. Well, that is a very sad turn of events in that particular case, but it is an extreme reaction to people. Do need to remember if you're being bullied on Facebook or other social media. All of them have a block button and all of them have a function to report abuse. You don't have to put up with it. Anyway, finally for now, what would you say, Paul, to users of social media, Facebook, Twitter, Periscope, Snapchat, Instagram, all of those who may not be aware of the actual dangers involved? What advice would you give them? To repeat myself, I'd say never post anything that you wouldn't ordinarily want people to know about you. I know people shouldn't be drinking below 18, but the reality is that people do have a, have a couple of drinks sometimes. Don't post if, if you're drunk or an EBA agent. And never agree to meet anybody that you've met online in a private place. So if you live your life by those rules, you should be safe enough on social media. And would you say involve your parents in your online life? I think so. I mean, there have been cases of, of parents setting up fake profiles and befriending their children just so they can keep an eye on what they're at. I don't know how people would feel about having their parents as friends online, but again, it's not my area in particular. But there are certain uh, safeguards and features that parents can uh, put on their children's phones to limit their access to uh, certain websites and certain social media sites. Well, listen, Paul, thanks a million for talking to us this evening on the oh. F-Bomb on F4Q. We'll talk to you again next week. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. The F-Bomb on Freak.